Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and this is May Mural Month. Ooh, this is my favorite time of year. Murals are the most profitable part of my art business and the way I'm able to make six figures while painting maybe three-fourths of the year. I love taking time away to travel, relax, work on side projects like the book I just wrote called Mural Money. <laughs> it all works together. And yeah, just, just do all the things and getting paid the big bucks through painting murals is what allows all these other things to happen. And so this month, I'll be interviewing muralists exclusively to talk about how they built their mural business and dissecting all of their strategies to give you the knowledge to do the same. Plus, I've made an extra special training just for you all about murals to completely lay out the benefits and strategies to getting your own own mural business up and running. Check that out, artistacademy.co slash muralmaster, artistacademy.co slash muralmaster, or you can just click the link in the notes section and get to all of that. So yeah, we have a very extra special episode today. I feel like I say that a lot, I, but I really, really, really enjoyed talking to street artist turned muralist, James Carter. So this week, our guest is featured from the Northern United Kingdom. And James has been dabbling in paint and street art for many years, but just recently went full-time into the mural business during the COVID lockdown, which I say recent, but it's been about two years now. So, I mean, it's quite a different landscape for artists working across the pond (laughs) in this interview. So we chat about the differences and similarities compared to painting in the United States. It's refreshing to hear James's welcoming view on things like painting in public. Plus, he gives some tips on using spray paint, which I am just now getting into, and a whole bunch of stuff in between. But let me know what you think about this week's episode for May Mural Month with muralist James Carter. Hey guys, today I have James Carter on and we're going to talk about all things murals. I actually found you in the Mural Artists Facebook group and I saw some of your giant murals and I'm like, this guy, I've got to interview this guy. And so can you tell us a little bit about how you got into the arts and where you're located and all of the things? So I'm in the uh, Durham, which is in the UK, in the northeast of the UK. So we're a couple of hours south of Scotland. And I got into murals through like street art and graffiti and during lockdown. So a couple of years ago now, I progressed into doing like big murals that weren't letters, basically. Wait, wait, you just got into this during lockdown like two years ago? So I've been painting, like doing street art for a long time, uh, like graffiti. And then, so yeah, I think I started two years ago doing things that weren't letters, basically. So I started doing, I did a painting for my my grandmother just it was like a bird just you know it's like a present uh on this like wall she had and then it was like it was good so I was like oh that, I actually really enjoyed that I'd never painted anything that wasn't like letters before that so yeah and then I just decided to paint something else in the same sort of style and just kept going so and then people started to ask for things and then so you started to get busy in that way or you just kind of painted for yourself yeah, so to start with, I was painting for myself and um, I just wanted to try it out because I've obviously seen big murals in, in different cities and uh, there's a lot of public art, especially in the South, but there was nothing really up where I was. And it was a really interesting time because there was quite a lot of public art coming out like during the pandemic and um, supporting the NHS, our health service and nurses. So there was like a bit of a like, resurgence of like street art and I think I just got on the back of that and got loads of support for it and I was just doing it I was just doing it for fun and then people asked me to paint stuff and like wanted to pay me and I was like no don't be silly and it was a really interesting way of like starting this this work and now I do it full time so it was a really interesting way to join this. Yeah, so we have a few Artist Academy members that are in the UK, and they're finding that, I'm sure they're in different parts of where you are and whatnot, but they're finding that whenever they go and pitch their services, like for murals, a lot of people are really hesitant towards murals. Like, it's not really as big of a thing over there as it is in the United States over here. Is that what you're finding too, or is it changing? So I was speaking to someone who's been in the business 
like over 10 years this morning actually and he was saying that it was only during lockdown that he's actually been making money of it basically so I'm not sure what's changed but it seems like it's a very different landscape like compared to the the US just how many people are doing it and how supported it is and how like how common it is so yeah it's it's very different so I do really like the neural artist group on Facebook because Americans just make me laugh sometimes. <laughs> Wait, how? What do we do? <laughs> so it's really funny. I think especially because I came into it in like a super chilled way. I was just like kind of, oh, people want to pay me for it. All right, then that's fine with me. And so just things like, you know, this posts on that group where people say, oh, someone wants to make like t-shirts out of my mural design. And everyone's like, you need to sign a contract. You need like all this um you know don't let them do it uh, take them to court and it's a uh, seems very litigious over there and um it's just a really different i guess because there's so much more competition and different like the job landscapes are very different over there so yeah it's it's funny <laughs> that's so funny i feel like even here so i'm in the Midwest. And so everybody's like ways at each other on the road. Like people are Mm -hmm. oddly nice to each. It's just like, I feel like we don't charge quite as much as, you know, the coasts and all that. And so Mm -hmm. I feel like the mural, the mural scene in the Midwest is slightly different. And I just had a customer the other day say, Hey, like, we'd like to make your mural into t-shirts. And it's just this really small gym. And I got paid a lot to do it. And I'm like, okay, great. Like, I yeah. just don't care. I'm like, I probably should. Cause I see those people too in, in the mural artist group. They're like, no, don't do that. Blah, blah, blah. But I feel like it's, maybe, maybe it's a Midwest thing. I'm just like, yeah, what, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably like closer to my attitude and I guess our attitudes over here it is like really different because there's there's quite a lot of questions and quite a lot of people seeking help which is great but um you know all of the answers I'm like wow like things things really are so different and I do really like always like speaking up and something's really different because I do have a really different perspective and I just think that's so interesting because yeah. there'll be like 20 people all saying like sue them sue them and I'm just like that's fine don't worry you know yeah really though that that is such an american thing and i hate it i hate that people just wave that legal lawyer flag all the oh it oh okay let's talk about more about these differences because i'm very interested so what are you charging for murals like what did you start off charging what are you charging right now like i just wanted to see if like if it's per square foot or per hour if it's similar to what we're charging here or whatnot yeah so i don't charge per square foot and I don't know anyone I only know a few of the mural artists but they don't charge per square foot that again seems like a thing that is like more American so I charge roughly like 300 to 350 pounds per day so I'm guessing that's probably like 400 dollars a day yeah four or five hundred yeah yeah which is I just usually go off what like a, we call them like trades people people who you like electricians plumbers gas fitters I just try and go off the same price as that. Um, but yeah, I think that there's probably going to be people who, and I know people have said, you know, you should charge more. And I do add like costs on top of that. That's just like my labor for the day. But that seems to be the price that most other mural artists I know are working at up here. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, that's a great living, <laughs> you know? And yeah, I think it, it's all over the board over here. You know, like I'd say people who have just started in the first couple of years, I'd say there's, they're charging that or less. And then ones that are, you know, if you've gotten really fast a bit more, but I, I mean, I think that's comparable. Yes. So mm-hmm. is it very competitive where you are or are people kind of helping other people out? Yeah. So it's not, no, it's not a very competitive like business to be in. There is like a few different people in my area, but just for like context, the northeast of the UK is like the average income is significantly lower than the south, a lot less economically developed up here. So, you know, there's not as many jobs and, you know, 300 pound a day is like incredibly good. Most wages are like 20,000 pounds a year. That's kind of like a decent wage up here. So Again, it's not, it's not really not a lot of money. So yeah, there, there's a few of us doing it, but 
some of us are friends um and we get on and it's not it's not too bad everyone kind of has their own niche and i kind of have seen what people are doing and have decided to do something well i wanted to do something different anyway so um you know it makes sense don't step on anyone else's toes and then i get to do my own thing as well I feel like where you live is very comparable to the Midwest of the United States. Like the w- wages are also very low here. I'd say comparable to exactly what you said, 20 to 30,000 American dollars is probably, you know, what most, most teachers make here in the mm-hmm. United States and whatnot. Okay. So you have your own niche. How did you come about this? Because this is a question I get asked all the time because a lot of mirrorless including myself, I do a bunch of different things. Like I'll do a kid's room one day and I'm doing a logo another day and then I'm doing some other style, like whatever the customer wants the next day. And so I kind of have a style, but not really. It's just very versatile. You work in more of a niche. How did you come about that? So it's basically because of like how my other skills combine. So I knew that I wanted to be like outside in the public because... I just really love chatting to people and meeting people. So, and, you know, it's, it's really nice when you get to interact with the public based around your mural and they're seeing it and they're talking to you and bringing up stories. I really, really enjoy that. Like outdoors and coming from a graffiti, like street art background, outdoors is, it's what I want to be doing basically. So yeah, definitely outdoors and like really big stuff. I really enjoy like huge like massive projects and yeah I really like heights as well I I like do rock climbing as well so I really enjoy getting like on a really big scary 20 meter articulated boom and oh I just love it it's it's like so so much so much nicer than paint on the ground I my face is just like oh oh my god I'm glad somebody loves it (laughs) Like, yeah. I, it's, it's, it takes me a while. Once I'm up there, I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> it, it'll be fine. And then after a while, it's fine. But I just would rather not. I'd rather just be on my feet, on a flat wall, indoors, on like a kid's room. That's that's a good day. But you like outside in the weather. Doesn't it rain a lot? Yeah, but it also doesn't rain and then <laughs> starts raining and then stops raining. So, But I'm also like, you know, an, only really like a year into doing this full time. So I'm kind of still finding out what you can do. Like I was trying to paint in the winter and it was it was really hard, but I'd just never done a winter before. So I had to just kind of have a go and it's possible. It's definitely, there's definitely things you can do and ways around it, but it doesn't rain enough to like keep you indoors. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I'm just stereotyping. I'm imagining, imagining London and imagining the rain all the time. And so I'm yeah. you're, you're decently close to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like fog and people with bowler hats rushing with newspapers over their heads. Yes. That's spot on actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Also, what kind of terms do people use when they come up to you, when they see you doing street art or murals and whatnot? Cause like in, in the United States here, like a lot of people will say things like, you missed a spot or you know like a lot of people will ask me to paint their faces in the mural I get that one a lot I don't know why what are the things and I'm really looking for your your you know UK slang in here because you said a couple things that we don't say and I'm like tell me more of that (laughs) so I painted in I mean the classic one I get is are you Banksy (laughs) which is just so original I love it it happens almost every time and then I just always say, if I was, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> and they love it, and it's just, it's fine. Then they can, they've had a joke, and we've all had a joke. So, but yeah, I get that all the time. People do ask to put the names in, but I was painting in an area that's quite a rough area, like a dodgy area. And this guy came past and said, oh, put my name in, put my name in. I said, oh, what's your name? And he said his name was uh, Zanny Ryan, and it's spelled X-A-N-I. I was like, oh, all right, okay, are you sure that you want me to put that in? He was like, I was like, do you have any other nicknames? He was like, yeah, Red Devil Ryan. I was like, um, do you have any names that aren't sketchy? And his final name was The Chemist. Okay. <laughs> so I was painting like a street scene, like a black and white old-fashioned street. And then I had one of the signs I put in uh, XR Chemist for Zanny Ryan's Chemist. Okay, so, cool. <laughs> and that was on my last painting, so... Uh, yeah, shout out to Red Devil Ryan, a.k.a. The Chemist. 
<laughs> his non dodgy name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the only one he had. But yeah, people just always say, put my name in, you missed the spot. When I was painting the boat, people were like, where's the mermaid? Where's the bird? That was another good one. Oh, the boat one. So the, actually, that ties into a question. So Timory, who she's in the Arts Academy Advance, she asked, she said, I saw your huge sea and boat mural on the side of a building. That thing was huge. How long did it take you to paint it? I think I did like 15 days of spraying. Like, but then there was also a few days where I was doing the background, but I was just, I had someone else helping me do the background and he said I was being too messy. So I wasn't allowed to do it. And then I had another guy helping us do the spray. And so it was like a month long project, you know, start to finish with me doing, like I say, mostly spraying and a lot of chatting as well. <laughs> well, it's huge. So I, I can imagine that it took a month. Yeah. And it looks really great. Okay. So you use spray. So do you mean like you have like a big spray machine and you spray like that, or you use like spray paint out of a can? I use like aerosol cans because that's what I'm used to with graffiti so put 10 years into learning how to operate a spray can so I'm like really really good at it now and I, I tried to use one of the compressors where it's like a, you dip it in paint and then the tube and you just, it's like a gun but it was always too windy outside and I was like spraying all day really happily and then um, I was like wow this is so effective I've just painted this whole side of the building and then I um, the wind was really strong. So I'd like got paint on all the cars in the street. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> so I really don't like using that now because it's the spray guns like weird. If there's any wind, you just start painting cars. So I just use aerosol and then bucket paint with a roller for the background. What did the people say when they came out and they're like, my car's blue or has like a tint of blue on the windshield? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, luckily... They were really nice about it. Um, so I said, oh, I'm really sorry, you know, and um, what do you want to do? Like, do you want me to, like, get a valet, like a cleaner? It'll come off. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. Like, you, you can take it off. So I hired, like, a cleaner to come and get it off. And they were, it didn't all come off, though. So, But they were really canny. So, and I hadn't been, like, talking to them while I was painting the mural. So they knew I was, like, like genuine and sorry and stuff. So they were like, oh, don't worry about it. Um, but she said something like, just do me a painting. Uh, one day I was like, all right, yeah, fine. Oh, that's so lucky. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that's something that somebody in the Midwest would say, but like, I just have this like stigma outside of the Midwest. People, I feel like a lot of people would, you know, wave that like lawyer court flag, yeah. be like, you rode my car, I'm going to take it, like blah, 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 insurance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you spray <laughs> some like Californian person's Tesla, they'll just be like, oh my God. Okay, yeah. I feel like a Tesla would be a different yeah, level. Yeah. 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 Okay, what brand of spray paint do you use? And it's so funny because I feel like I've been using acrylics and latex and all of that and like a big spray machine for mm. many years. And now I'm just now into using the spray caps and doing like a neon glow stuff and doing the street art type stuff. It's like we're, we're working opposite. So I have questions yeah. for you on that. What, what type do you use and where do you get them? So I use Montana 94. Okay, um, great. <laughs> which is the Spanish Montana. Is that the same one you use? I just started using Montana Black. So Oh, so that's different. Oh, wait, how? How is it different? It's kind of like a graffiti thing. We're really strange. So there's two Montanas. The original one is the Spanish Montana, which gets abbreviated to MTN sometimes. And that's the 94 brand. And then there's German Montana, which is, I don't know, apparently like German Montana is not the real one. I don't like know a knockoff? <laughs> Well, I mean, they're definitely an established brand and they, they do stuff. So, you know, they're not like, it's not just like big. But yeah, so I don't know. I just, I trust the 94 and it's the one I've always used since I started. So They're called what and where? So you have to order them from some other country? No, so the Spanish Montana, you can get it on online and stuff. But I'm actually like a retailer for, the, for Montana 94. That was how I started actually, so... When I decided I was going to do murals because I was having such a great time, I was like, oh, I'll just sell spray paint and that'll like pay for the murals because I knew so many different people doing different arty stuff. So I like ordered a palette of spray paint and like told them I was going to set up as a shop. And then, yeah, so I just have lots of spray paint and sell some and get it a lot cheaper. 
So can I order it through you and it automatically gets shipped to the United States or am I better off doing it some other way? Like, do you have a link that I can, do, can, I, I can use? Nah, nah. So I don't have a website or anything like that. It's just kind of a private clients only. And just for other mural artists uh, in the area who different people who might need something last minute or like I delivered some this morning for a guy who was like really stuck on a job and, you know, I just dropped them off for him. So things like that. It's like just a little, I don't know. I expected to be doing that and then having another job. But now I paint murals and then sometimes deliver paint to people as well. <laughs> okay. That's so funny. Cause like, it's just so funny the different ways that we all kind of get into this and the, the little side projects that we do. Like I have a podcast and you, you sell mm-hmm. spray paint on the side. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So just, just to clarify one more time. So, cause I want to, I want to order this paint if I can, how do I order it? Where, what website do I go to? So I want to, I want to use what you're doing, using cause you've been oh, doing this for a long time. So, all right. So it's MTN. Okay. Which is like, I think it's the brand to differentiate it so that it's like Montana 94 and it's just really good. It's like, yeah, really good pressure, really good coverage, and the colors are like, you know, it's just there's definitely like the one you're using will be an alternative. So they usually have both brands have like a high pressure and a low pressure brand. So with Montana, I think Montana, like the German one is black, which is like high pressure, and then gold is low pressure. But for Montana, Spanish Montana, 94 is the low pressure one, and then hardcore is the high pressure one because when you're doing graffiti you want high pressure you want it to come out really quick you want super fast high coverage but when you're doing murals you want like low pressure you know steady sort of coverage okay good to know i still need to practice more but i kind of get what you're throwing down (laughs) okay awesome (laughs) so do you have any fun mural stories of anything that's like maybe funny or crazy or unusual that has happened on a mural site although the the getting paint on cars is might be the top one (laughs) i mean just yeah just i mean loads but none of them are really good (laughs) they're just like life stories of um because i don't know i just I think it's just funny how I got into it basically and because I didn't expect to be doing it it kind of like crept up on me and then it's just grown and grown and yeah I just wasn't really prepared for it so like I just wouldn't have any of the gear and wouldn't have anything you need and you know not not know how to do something but still just like take on a job and be like all right let's go and just not being ready not have not even having like ladders and taking on a job that's like really big uh, like a big wall and then just turning up and being like oh yeah I don't know how I'm gonna do this and then like be like right well I guess I'll go and buy some ladders and then I got a big commission for like a really big building so I bought a scaffold because I've always wanted a scaffold and then it like only went halfway up the wall so I was like oh I'll have to do something else so then I went on a course and learned how to drive the little crane things so it's just it's just been really funny just kind of you know just having a go and uh, there's been a lot of really hilarious mistakes along the way but uh, <laughs> yeah you're just figuring it out as you go you know and I feel I just remember the first couple of years of mine and I just I felt so stressed because I and so like annoyed that I didn't know what I was doing and I was like it just t- took so long like I but you don't seem very stressed you seem very like ah whatever I'll just figure it out so I, I don't know I don't have a ladder but We'll just see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I think I think it's because I came into it like knowing that. Well, when I started, I had like another job, so you know, I just really didn't didn't need the work, and you know, I kind of didn't even want to do do it full time. Like I turned loads of people down for murals to start with, and I think it's because I know like I don't like need to do it either. Like I will just get another job, and so I think it's just like a really relaxed thing for me, even though. I would be really sad now if I had to get another job. Yeah. It's just so funny to me that you think this is a relaxing job. You're like, ah, I just need to go 20 foot up on a crane or however meters, whatever. And you're like, it's so relaxing up there. And I'm up there like, ah, like the wind. <laughs> oh no, it's definitely like, it is definitely stressful. And there's, yeah, it, it has been like a real struggle as well to get established in the first couple of years. Like a lot of, cause you just don't know what you're doing. And like you say, you know but I've had some like really really good help from people 
yeah, I've just been kept alive by my friends and family, basically. And uh, now I'm at a place where I'm like a lot, I'm not stressing anymore. It's, it's good and things are super chill. Um, but yeah, the first, the first year was pretty brutal and a lot of, yeah, I can laugh at, laugh at the stuff now, I guess. Uh, yeah okay that makes me feel a little better (laughs) but yeah yeah I totally can relate and like having other you know more experienced mirrorless just kind of show you even the little things be like hey Mm. do it like that and then send you on your way can make such a big difference (laughs) but yeah okay how are you getting customers now versus how how are you getting them then is it so any any come from social media or is it mainly just like word of mouth I think that's why painting like public and it was it was really accidental I didn't like go into this with like a sort of business mind but I painted like the big public murals like my first ones were like you know gable end size and then it was just like a really good advertisement and it's like it's just like leaving a big billboard behind and then I always talk to people as well you know I, I never have my headphones on I don't paint with headphones I'm really against the headphone usage why Oh, they're terrible. You can't interact with people, which is super important for me, especially when I'm doing them, like almost all the murals I take on are because a story or something I've spoke to someone about or in a place I love. So I want to listen to what people think about the mural and then, you know, I want to be able to talk to them about it. And I just always used to get sad when you would see someone doing something really interesting and they're not like willing to share with you. They're just kind of, doing their own thing and I like oh I really want to ask them like how do they do that I really want to ask them like what's this so I make like a yeah I mean I make an effort but at the same time it's like it's not hard because I really I want to give that to people I want to talk to them so I think headphones are just like basically you saying I'm not willing to chat which uh I don't know I just think I just think as a public mural artist and I've got all of my commissions from that, from chatting to people and just being outdoors. And then, like I say, leaving the big mural behind is a big billboard and just being nice. Uh, and then, I love that you say that it's a billboard because I've been saying that for a long time. And that's how I got my start too. I started painting uh, wings all over town. So like mm. street art. And you're totally right. When you're out there painting in public, people just walk by and they're interested in what you're doing and they want to talk to you. And there's some, I'd say maybe half of the conversations are interesting to be honest. And then the other <laughs> half are just people just like, heckling or like telling a bad joke I'm like okay thanks yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah I, I actually paint with one headphone in at all times so like one and then that way I have the other one to like because I've missed a couple people talking to me at some points and I feel bad because <laughs> they're like trying to say something I'm like oh I'm sorry what <laughs> like or I just completely miss it and they're like good job and I just don't say anything and I think that's such like- a bitch move <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you're right. Yeah, I I know a few artists too who are like, I don't want to be talked to, blah blah blah. But mm-hmm. and I totally get your point though. You know, yeah. wanting to socialize and because it, it is a very interesting you know thing to do. Like especially people who aren't artistic at all, they they see a big mural being painted, they're like, whoa, I have so many questions. Yeah, and I think like fair enough. If that's some people literally couldn't concentrate and be talking to someone and like have social stuff expends too much energy for people to do that and then get back to work but for me it like really gives me energy to like talk to people and then like you know find out more about them and you know just that just makes me feel really good and I'm just a really social person and I really care about community so that's what I want to do and I want to paint community murals I bet there's people out there who are like super talented you have the headphones on because it helps them work they don't want distractions but their work is like awesome and they they don't necessarily want to like learn stories and learn about the community that their work their work is just like in its own way separate that's their thing but again it's just like I've worked out what my strengths are um half accidentally and half on purpose and one of them is just like really caring about people and wanting to engage and so I, I just get more murals that way. It just works really well. Yeah. And the other thing with headphones, if you spray paint, headphones should be banned because you need the audio feedback on the spray paint. It's kind of like hearing a car with, if you drive stick, as 
you can hear the engine like revving. You need to hear the spray can start and finish and how much it's coming out. I tried having headphones on and painting. It's so much harder and um, you really need that audio uh, feedback. That's a really good point that I would have uh, never thought of at all just because I'm so new to spray. And I love that you said that though, like having having a social mindset of, I just love that you're sharing your, your perspective on it because I think it's going to make a lot of artists think twice about maybe just have those not having those noise canceling headphones if they can still concentrate and whatnot but yeah because it does open up so many more opportunities thank you for sharing that awesome okay well that's really all i had for today thank you so much for coming on and i love talking about our differences and listening to your accent really (laughs) and thank you so much for coming on and yeah just talking with us yeah it's been great thank you yeah, yeah, we, we have a, a bunch of people commenting here that uh, Rachel says great advice. We have some people saying lo- love your outlook, Lewis. So yeah, thank you so much for coming on and I hope you have a great rest of your week and have fun muraling in public. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Great to speak to you. Thanks, everyone. That's a wrap. So if you're listening to this episode and thinking fine, I'll give murals a shot. (laughs) I've made this extra special training video for you to completely lay out the benefits and strategies to getting your own mural business up and running. Check that out at artistacademy.co slash muralmaster. That's artistacademy.co slash muralmaster. You can just click the link in the notes section. Like always, I hope you've enjoyed this episode with James. And then we're going to be having another one come up next week that I think you will equally enjoy. Uh, I love May Mural Month so much. Mm, Okay. All right. Well, I hope you have a great week and see you soon.